Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we will discuss about advanced scheduling technique called as node affinity and anti-affinity. So node affinity is also pretty similar to node selector, but it has a better way of expressing the constraints which we have, a more um, expressive expressions you can write and you can have a soft uh, type of constraint and a hard type of constraint both. So here also we are defining a constraint and we are saying that my pod would be required to be placed in a specific labeled node or preferred to be placed in a specific labeled node. So if you see there are two types of node affinity, one is preferred during scheduling and the other one is required during scheduling. Preferred one is more soft type of rule like you prefer the condition to be matched and in case the condition is matched, not matched, it's still okay. But scheduler will first try the best to match the condition. In case that particular constraint which you have specified is not matching, still then your pod will not go to pending state, rather would go to a non-preferable node. But in the second type, the required during scheduling which you mentioned, Required is like a mandate rule, a hard rule which has to be met. And if that is not met, my pod will go as pending and it will not get placed unless and until I uh, get a required type of resource in the cluster. So there are two things. One is the affinity section and there is the anti-affinity section. And in affinity and anti-affinity, you have two types of Constraint one is the soft type of constraint with the preferred condition. One is the hard type of constraint with the required condition. So we will see all the four combination. Let's first see the node affinity with the required type of condition. Required to be in such type of nodes. So you have multiple worker nodes and admin guy is managing the label and all in the cluster. Being a developer, you write a deployment file in which you have specified a constraint for your pods placement. And as we had discussed, the condition which we specify is applicable to the pod. All the containers belonging to a pod should abide by this, right? A pod is the smallest unit. So condition, if you see, it's not inside the container section. It belongs to the pod. Inside the spec section, con containers is one of the uh, section and affinity is another section. Inside affinity you have no affinity and in no affinity you can have required condition or preferred condition. If it is a required condition that is it's like a mandate condition to be met but this condition is mandate only during scheduling. If my pod is up and running and admin guy is making any changes with respect to my constraint, the labels and all are getting changed on the fly, then my already up and running pods will not be affected. That's the reason the word required during scheduling is to be met during the placement or the scheduling of the pod. And during the execution of the pod, this criteria need not be met. It can be ignored. So my condition is specified as node selected terms. I specify a expression and in this I'm giving the key and the value and operator is in. So whichever node is labeled as disk type as SSD, the value is SSD, I required my pod to be placed in such type of labeled nodes. So being a developer, you are writing this definition file. My pod request has gone to the scheduler. Scheduler understands that, okay, it's looking for disk type as SSD and that's a mandate condition. So now it will try to place it. And because none of the nodes in the cluster are labeled as disk type SSD, my pod will go into pending state and it is in the list of the scheduler to be placed, but it will not get placed. It will show pending and it will say that we don't have any matching resources in the cluster to place pod A for us. Now, scheduler, keep an eye on it. And finally, if my admin guy has labeled one of the worker nodes, like here, I'm labeling worker node one. 
So kubectl label nodes, and I'm labeling worker node one as disk type SSD. Admin executes this command and a label is get, getting created and worker node one is getting labeled. As soon as this is labeled, my pod gets placed into worker node one. And this happens because the scheduler finds a matching resource for that particular pods constraint in the cluster. So if on the run, the label is being removed by the admin guy, my pod will not get affected because it is ignored during execution condition and pod will be happy up and running inside the same node, even though it doesn't have that label anymore. But label is to be matched only during scheduling process when the scheduler is finding the best fit node. It will not look for that condition on the run or execution of the pod. That was about the required condition. In case you have the preferred condition. So here I have admin and I have three worker nodes. I have developer who writes a file like this, very similar to the file which we saw for the required condition. But here in the deployment section, in the spec of the pod, you have affinity and no definity. Instead of required during scheduling, you have a preferred during scheduling. And this condition is also ignored during execution. So at present, whatever algorithms we have or the scheduling, advanced scheduling techniques we have in no definity, anti-affinity, everything is ignored during execution. It is only either preferred to have or required to have during scheduling. You see few other parameters over here instead of the node selector terms, you have a weight associated with this uh, preferred condition and you have a matching expression very similar to what we had in the required during scheduling section. So I prefer to get placed in disk type as SSD and here in means prefer to be placed in. We would see the weight associated with it in a while. Just ignore the weight for a minute and let's see if I define a application file like this and I give the file to the scheduler. What does the scheduler do? Scheduler understands this is the constraint. It is preferring to get placed in disk type SSD, but that's a preferable condition. Even though it is not meeting, none of the worker nodes are meeting the criteria, still then it will get placed because that was a preferable condition. And in case the preferred condition is not matched, till then my pod would get placed in the cluster on a non-preferred node. But I have not mandated the condition. Now, if my admin guy is going ahead and labeling one of the nodes and we are labeling the worker node again, so worker node one is having a label as disk type SSD. Just imagine pod one got recreated because of some reason and scheduler will place it again. And because this time we have a node which is labeled as disk type SSD and my preferable condition can be matched, then the pod A gets placed on the node which has that particular label. So with the preferred condition, my pod will not go to pending state unless and until I really don't have resource in my entire cluster. If my preferred condition is not matched, it will place me on the node, which is not preferable as well, but my pods will not go to pending state. And if any time later scaling activity happens or recreation of auto healing happens, then if the preferred condition is matched, I'll get placed my pod will get placed on the preferred node. So if preferred node is available, well and good. If preferred node is not available, then still my pod gets placed on a non-preferred node. So on the go, if the label is removed because it is ignored during execution, pod A would be still up and running as it got placed on that particular node. So now let's understand what is the weight associated with that particular uh, condition which we had given. So when we say wait, you have preferred conditions. I can have multiple preferred condition and I can have a priority list of my preferred conditions. I can say this preferred condition holds 
more weightage than the other preferred condition. So let, let's see if I have three worker nodes and I have given in my specification section in the node affinity multiple conditions. My condition one is disk type as SSD and another is I need to have environment as def. This is my preferred condition. So I'll associate a weight with this. This is a much higher priority condition which needs to be met. So value for it is five, 10 and the dev is five, okay? So this is having more priority than this particular condition. Now I have multiple worker nodes. Let me label them. So first, if I don't have any label, it would behave how it has behaved. It will choose any of the best fit node out of this. But in case this node is labeled as SSD, this node is labeled as SSD and it is labeled as dev as well. And this node is just labeled as dev. So how does the scheduler take a decision? So when the scheduler is running, we had learned that it will filter out the nodes and first step and then it will score the nodes and at the last it finds the best fit one right uh, so let's filter out because it is a preferred condition it's not a mandate condition this is a preferred condition to have it will filter out all the three nodes here worker one worker two and worker three all of them get filtered out now it will score them this first worker node is just matching one criteria, score is 10. Second one is matching both the criteria, score is 15. Third worker node is matching only the environment criteria, so the value is 5. So best fit node becomes the node which is having the highest uh, value or the scoring of it. So worker node 2 is chosen for the placement of the pod. So weight is defining the priority or the preference of my conditions. If I have multiple conditions, I can say which condition holds more weightage and which needs to be met more badly than the other one. And that is the weight associated with it. Now coming to the affinity and anti-affinity section. So node affinity we saw, it's very similar to this, right? If you have preferred or required, the operator was in. You were specifying a condition and you wanted your pod to be in that node, either preferably or you're mandating that condition. So this was the node affinity, anti-affinity. This was the condition defined and this was the key and the value. In case of uh, required section as well, you had very similar to this affinity section, required condition and the value. But in case you want to specify anti-affinity, let it be in the required condition or the mandate condition, just change the operator from in to not in, and it will start behaving in the opposite way. I prefer not to be in node which are labeled as disk type SSD, or I require not to be in, in the nodes which have disk type SSD label. So let's see how does it do work actually so required not in i have worker node admin guy is there developer is writing a file with a not in operator so this is a required condition i am mandating that don't place me in the nodes which have disk type ssd so pod definition is given constraint is considered by the scheduler it will get placed anywhere because none of the nodes have that particular label and required condition is matched. Worker node three is the best fit node according to the scheduler, maybe because of the resources available on that particular node. Now it will be up and running. Just imagine my worker node one is labeled as disk type SSD. So worker node one is never a node for this particular pod. Even though recreation happens, it will go to worker node two or worker node three but it will never go to worker node one because I have mandated that the pod A should never get placed in worker node one. So that was the required condition and my pod would be up and running only in the node which doesn't have that label. In case I have a preferred condition and 
here first let's see if the admin guy is labeling one of the nodes so worker one is labeled as disk type ssd label is applied to worker node one and now the developer is trying to create a resource of kind deployment in which he has given the definition and given a preferred condition for not to be in nodes which are labeled as disk type ssd when it says not to be in then it is preferring the nodes which don't have that label so now pod a the constraint is checked by the scheduler it will place pod a on that node which has the label only when worker 2 and worker 3 are not having any resources or they can't accommodate pod a but your pod a can still go on worker node 1 if the other nodes are not the best fit nodes and it will be up and running over there till the time recreation happens. Now recreation happens and because of some reason or scaling may happen and scheduler gets a chance and this time worker node 2 is a uh, having resources. So preferred condition is being met by the scheduler. So it will choose worker node 2. If worker node 2 or 3, none of them are able to accommodate my pod then it will again go back to the worker node one but few things to keep in mind preferred condition and required condition behavior is different required conditions my things go on pending state in case it is not having the resources which i am asking for in case of preferred condition it will never go in pending state it will try and find a node even though it is not preferable it will place it and during execution, nothing gets affected on the fly. If any labels are changing and my pods are under execution, nothing would change over there. And we have weights associated with the preferred uh, conditions which we have. And in case of in and not in, the behavior is a bit vice versa, right? I give a preferred or required condition to be in, in such type of notes or not to be in such type of notes. So that was all about the advanced scheduling technique of no definity and amp definity. So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And if in case you want to have a deeper dive and want to build a career in Kubernetes and Docker, including DevOps, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on mastering Kubernetes, Docker and DevOps that includes how to build in-demand skills and land a higher paying job. So for that, you just have to visit k21academy.com forward slash k8s02. You have to click on book your free seat now. And after that, select an event date according to your availability. Enter your name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of interface. You just have to save this link on the extreme right, add it to your calendars and I'll see you in the free class. Till then, take care and keep learning.